So this is a quick tutorial on modeling perovskite solar cells with GPUDM. Um, I've recently added some new features to GPUDM to make modeling perovskite solar cells much easier and I guess quite fun. Um, so here's an example simulation that we're going to run through today. So I've got, um, it's got uh, five layers. So it's got the uh, two contacts, ITO contact and aluminum contact. It's got a perovskite layer here that we can sort of uh, look, look at. So there's, there's the perovskite layer. It's got a uh, electron transport layer and a hole transport layer. Um, this is about uh, 400 nanometers thick, and each of these layers here about 200 nanometers thick. Um, and you can get this example simulation up in the model simply by going for new simulation and selecting perovskite solar cell. And this and what I'm running through will will be will be in there. Um, so there it is. Now um, the interesting thing about perovskites is that. Perovskites don't only have electrons and holes um, doing the, the transport in them. They've also got another species of iron called another species of, um, that do, does effectively transport, which is mobile ions, uh, and, and these are embedded within the perovskite material. So if we look at a, and you can read about this in literature, but if we um, look at a at a at a um, at a, a perovskite solar cell, so let me draw it. So here we've got, well, we'll call this the conduction band, and we'll call this the valence band. Um, you'll have you know, electrons zipping around just like in a, in a normal device. So there's electrons moving in the conduction band. And in the valence band, you'll have holes moving around. So there's some holes just like in a normal device. And these will move depending on what the you know, drift and diffusion current is doing. But what the perovskites have that other devices don't have, they've got these species of mobile ions um, in, in the material that can sort of very, very slowly diffuse one way or diffuse the other way. So you've got sort of this extra species that you don't have when simulating um, uh, other well, when when simulating um, uh, another device, device like an organic or silicon solar cell. Um, so you've got to take account of this if you want to sort of sim simulate them properly. So um, let's uh, move that out of the way um, and let's go back to the simulation. So let's look at the. Um, if you look at the simulation types, you'll see in this example there's two types of, simulation of, of current voltage curve simulation. There's a, a JV curve and there's a time domain JV curve. So the JV curve simulation effectively assumes that this population of ions has had time to reach equilibrium. So you've applied a voltage effectively and this, this, this lot of ions has, has reached where they're going to reach by slowly drifting and diffusing there. So if we run this simulation, we can get a JV curve, just a simple perovskite JV curve. And uh, we can just plot the, uh, let's look at the current voltage. So there's, there's the current voltage of the, of the device. Let's just zoom in, it's a bit more interesting. And you can see this JV curve actually, if we make it a bit bigger and zoom in a bit more, it's got a bit of a weird shape because usually with a with a JV curve you'd expect it to be just completely flat like that, so sort of flat like that. Um, but it's got this weird bending and increase of, uh, over time, and this is due to effectively these these ions within this device shifting about as, as we're applying voltage to to the device as we're going up the JV curve. So let's have a look at what those ions are doing within the device. So if we move this out of the way, and we click on the snapshots window. Um, and select here. Um, let's first just look, look at what the electrons are doing. So here's the free free electrons. Let's just look look at what these are doing as a function of current voltage. So this is normally what the electrons um, are doing within the device. And we can also plot on here the holes. So let's let's add in the holes for the free holes. There's the free holes. So they're doing the opposite effectively. So we we can simulate what's what's happening with these these things. And let's add to this what the perovskite ions are doing. So if we add here and we, and we put in, it might not fit on the same scale actually, but let's put on N iron. And we can see um, what the ions are doing as, as a function of, um, of, of time, oh, sorry, of, of voltage. So let's just remove, um, it looks a bit odd because it's actually on a log scale. So let's remove the, uh, the, the electrons and let's remove the holes and let's have a close look at the ions. So when we go to negative voltages, so when we're down here on the JV curve, you see the ions are all, all pushed this way on the device, so that they're pushed up against one of the contact layers. As we step forward in voltage, you see the voltage ticking up here, the ions drift or drift within the device 
we increase the voltage, increase the voltage, and they're drifting within the device. And and this is this is the reason we've got this weird um, shape to the, to the JV curve there. So that's simulating JV, the JV curve. And what this is is you notice that there's no hysteresis in this in this JV curve at all, because um, usually when you measure perovskite, you get some type of hysteresis. And the reason there's no hysteresis is because we're assuming this is steady state. So we're assuming all these ions here have, re have reached um, equilibrium effectively. So we're measuring it effectively infinitely slowly. So let's now do a time domain simulation to look at hysteresis. So let's close this and close this. And what we're going to do is we're going to select simulation type time domain JV. And let's just run that and run, run a time domain JV curve. And what this is doing is this is applying a voltage to the device as you would an experiment. So it's actually taking a certain amount of time to move from one voltage step to the other. So let's look at the JV curve. Um, and this is the current voltage curve um, as a function of time. So let's have a look at here and see if we see hysteresis. Oh, whoops. I've just selected an error I didn't want to look at. Oh dear. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's good enough, so I've, well, maybe I can zoom, let me reopen this actually, so JB curve, let me zoom in again, I couldn't see where zero was, there we go, right, so what we've now got is a JB curve with some hysteresis, and it's also labelled with the time here in seconds it's taken to do it, so we've got 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0.8 and then we go back down 1.6 and we can see that we've got this, this hysteresis that you would expect in uh, perovskite devices. And you can change the, the time the sweep happens and the voltage and things like that by going to, so if you go to, move that out of the way, if you go to simulation editors, time domain simulation editor, and you can see the voltage ramp that's been applied. So for example, if you want to sort of apply, I don't know, a, you know, if you wanted to change this, so you see, it's, you see here it's ramping from minus uh, 0 0.5 volts to 1 volt and back down. If you wanted to go to, I don't know, what say, say 2 volts, you just change this to a 2 and change this to a 2 and then you'd be ramping to 2 volts. So I'm just going to put this back. And you can also introduce other, other, other sections. So for example, if you wanted to do multiple sweeps, you could add, for example, another line here, have it running for a second in length, a time step of this, a max let's start it off at I don't know minus 0.5 volts and you if you wanted to I don't know why you'd want to do this but you could maybe ramp ramp it down or maybe maybe want to go to a higher voltage let's go to point the two volts and make sure the sun is on so you see now we've sort of done this down up down up and you get multiple sweeps when you look to this window but I'm I'm not going to run that okay um, in fact no I, I, I will Let's just actually let's just uh, let's just change this slightly. Let's change this to say 1.0 or 1.2. So now, yeah. So now we're going down, up, down, up. Let's just rerun that just to, just to, just to see how it works. It shouldn't take long. And you can see the seconds here, the type time it's taking, or the, the time, the simulation time, not the actual time. There we go. Let's have a look at the JV curve again. Now with luck we should get three lines of hysteresis up, depending if the iron has settled down. We can actually see there's, there's three, yeah, so there's three very distinctive sweeps. So there's up, down, and then up again. And you can see there's got three sort of bits of hysteresis there, which is quite cool. So let's now look at what's going on within the simulation. So let's have a look at what these mobile arms are actually doing. So let's look at snapshots, and let's look at the iron population, so N iron. And let's run, let's go through forwards in time so we can see this, this popular, so it's also interesting to, before, before I go into that, notice that we've, the ions don't go into, so if you look at this, this layer between 0 and 200, and they don't go into this layer between 600 and 800. So if we look at this device structure, the proscot ions only live in this layer in the centre of the device. So now let's uh, step forward in time, so at 1 volt, and then you can see the population just change as we're applying, as we're applying this voltage pulse to it. And they, it's interesting, they never actually reach the, reach the starting position. 
again, that they sort of keep moving and migrating, which is, which is quite interesting. Um, so that's, that's simulating perovskite devices in time domain. And obviously, you can look at any other parameters of the device um, in, in, in here. So if you want to look at phi, for example, the PHI phi, oh, where's it gone? Phi, that's the, elect that's the electric, that's the voltage across the device, the voltage, so the potential across the device, that's the potential um, calculated. And you look at the conduction, valence band, and things like that. So let's close that. Um, the other thing to look at, I think, just to finish off, is to how to set up the sort of iron density and things like that. If we go to electrical simulation, look at doping ions, um, doping ions, you can set in this doping window effectively uh, how much doping there is, um, what mobile iron density there is, and, um, for example, the mobility of, 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 the, of the mobile ions. So here we've got no mobile, no mobile ions in this first layer, uh, which is uh, the P dot. Clearly, we've got mobile ions in the perovskite, and we've got no mobile ions in the other layer. And we can, for example, change the magnitude, or we could change, I don't know, we could change how much they move. So let's move, let's, let's reduce their mobility to 10 to the 13. And let's rerun that. We should get a slightly different JB curve out. Let's get the JB curve. What this does to it, I don't know. Maybe it's reduced the hysteresis because you've got slower movement of the ions. Yeah, it looks like it's reduced hysteresis because we've got slow movement of the ions. Yeah, it's still got some hysteresis there, but it's reduced it a bit. Okay, so that's that. Um, what else is worth uh, talking about? Ah, yes. So the let's talk about the solver. So that's effective demonstration. Oh, instantly before we move on, you can get things like simulation efficiency out of this siminfo.dat uh, file. So in there, you've got the device efficiencies. So this is a four percent device. I mean. You could increase that by increasing mobility or something like that. Um, so yeah. So let's now talk about uh, the electrical solver. So there's three problems being solved within this uh, device. There's the um, effect of the drift diffusion equation. So where the just deciding how the or understanding how the electrons and holes move. So to to solve these to understand that you need to solve the drift diffusion equations. We've also got potential in the device, so we've got we've got some type of uh, sort of voltage. So how can I how can I, how can I draw this? We've got some type of um, voltage profile across the device. So we'll call this phi and describing the potential. So that's the electrostatic problem. We've also got these mobile ions that need solving. So in a standard simulation, you would basically solve. Let me just get my pen. You would solve the drift diffusion equation to describe the electrons and holes and you'd solve Gauss's or Poisson's equation to, to understand the electric potential. Um, so if you disable the mobile iron solver by clicking on that, so it's now not depressed, you're running a standard simulation and you're not simulating anything with these ions, so these are no longer being simulated. So if you run that simulation, and we'll run it in, uh, just run it in let's run it in time domain, just run that simulation in time domain. It's a bit quicker. You'll see that there's there should be basically no hysteresis. Or there may be a very small amount. Yeah, there's basically no hysteresis. So this is basically a yeah, there is no no. This is effectively we've turned off the mobile, so we we can zoom right into this. Yeah, it's, there really is no hysteresis at all. Um, and that's because we've turned off these mobile ions. And when we turn that back on again, we get, we get our hysteresis. Um, so that's that. Now, and what you can do if you're interested, you can turn this off, this off, and just turn the electrostatic solver on. It will just solve the potential um, within the device. So now let's look at uh, traps. So what we can also do is we can introduce um, trap states. So Here's the uh, device. It's getting a bit of a long video now. I think this is probably the last thing I look at. Um, so here's the uh, electrical parameter window. 
And you can see at the moment we've got the number of traps set to zero. So zero traps, zero traps, zero traps. So what we can do is we can turn this, these traps on. So let's say have five trap states in, in, the, in this device. Um, we can then actually introduce shock read hall recombination on top of um, our perovskite ions. So um, uh, we, we can also introduce so effectively here in this in this in this region here um, shock read hall recombination. So this effectively means we've got some trap states um, in there in which charged carrots can get can get trapped. And you can read about shock read hall recombination in other places or watch some other videos. Um, so we've done we've done that. Now, just a little tip, um, if you're going to do this, if you're going to turn on shock read hall recombination um, within the device and perovskite ions, um, I'll just go to electrostatic solver first, click configure, and um, just click this off. And this, this, it says enable Poisson solver, click this off. And what this will do is it will just disable um, it trying to solve the device uh, uh, with just the Poisson equation in the very first iteration step. Um, so just click that off. It'll, the Poisson solver will still kick in later, but it just will disable it in the first go. So just click that off. And then you can do, let's say, run a JV curve. And you'll be able to solve the device with traps, with Proscot irons, and with everything like that. And it will also work in time event. So I think we're coming to the end of the video now. Um, is there anything else I need to talk? To? So let's let this run. There we go. And you know, then we can look at trap electrons and stuff like that. So that's it really. Um, you can finish off with say change change materials and stuff here if you want. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that video and I uh, hope that helped or if you're trying to do some simulation of Proscott Lions and uh, thank you very much for listening.